Good evening and welcome to Mum, McLoon on Maui. Today's seminar number 15, it is uh, June the 6th, Kia ora all, and let's get going. I was just looking at an interview of the guy who wrote that book, uh, the newspaper series, Too Big to Fail. I guess, yeah, it's a book. He was saying that the incompetence of uh, AIG and the Lehman Brothers was phenomenal, that he found out as he interviewed the, the characters involved. And that very incompetence was exactly what McLuhan uh, was uh, saying when he came in 66. We're going to bury this village. We're going to bury the centralized control from New York City. And we can decentralize around the whole planet and develop a more comprehensive economy. He also said in the meantime, there will be a boom in, in the stock market. I guess I was going to say, I think, you know, all of this stuff is, uh, unfortunately, it's you know, five, five steps forward, three steps backwards, and it's also, it can be quite painful. Oh, that's the Tetris. That's the Tetris. Five steps forward, three steps back. That, think of the Tetris that way. Be, because you retrieve things that blind people to what's going on, but it seems important what they retrieve because it resonates with what actually is going on. No, I've never thought of that before. That's a good thing. You know, three steps forward, two steps back. That's the Tetris. McClure would not say it's right or wrong. He'd say there's services to the new wealth and disservices. It's interesting, he said that the reason New York collapsed in the 20s is the radio environment created so much new wealth that the accounting books couldn't measure it. They couldn't, they couldn't take this free information that was available to people for pennies. They couldn't fit it back into the old industrial accounting books that Marcus called visual space. And so that, so then... Um, uh, what, what could say it happened again? Yes, I call it the Enron factor, where there's so much uh, wealth being created that the books can't measure it, so Enron had to pretend that they, had, they were involved with money, so they were given loans, and they were allowed to declare those loans as profit. That's the, that's the sleight of hand, or um, the, uh, the um, handkerchief in uh, the play Othello. It's the visual... Um, the visual uh, piece of meat that distracts the uh, the dog by the burglar. So Wall Street can keep going as long as people and, ma and many cultures now are t adopting private individual space as they come to America. As long as people think there's a private identity, then money and ownership can carry on. And Marshall wasn't against that. He just said, you can't stop in the Western world the private ownership of things. Even though there's nothing to own anymore, as everything gets, as you say, speeded up or imploded. You can't, McLuhan said the electric environment can't be bought, sold, or stolen. As well That's as a very interesting statement. But culturally, because we're literate and have private identities, we like to say we own things. And that, that old meme is what Wall Street is built on, though its actual technical structure denies that. And so I think that, that McLuhan as an economist, that's what he meant when he said, um, we come to bury this village. The, the centralization, which we naturally do and go for, as natural to Westerners, you know, not what the Chinese do, uh, that's becoming a problem as more and more of a modern electronic digital media becomes, quote, communistic, or what he calls software communism, where everybody shares it for nothing. As a matter of fact, there was an article written a couple of years ago about um, Google and Apple, is that the company that would get ahead would be the one that gives the stuff away. Google would provide the most services for free. <laughs> this, is, this is what that level of the virtual economy is. You have to come up with ways to give your stuff away and have immediate mobility and access. That's how you become economically precious. Economically precious, never been said before. This is the way to the museum room. Mind your hats going in. Now you are in the willing gun museum. This is a Prusius gun. This is a French. <laughs> This is the flag of the Prussians, the Captain Sarasa. This is the bullet that bang the flag of the Prussians. This is the French that fire on the bull that bang the flag of the Prussians. Salute the cross gun, up at your pack and fall. 